old times? Who says? Early motoring was more a case of jolting about than driving. People lolloped along lanes on coach springs and usually solid rubber tires. Too uncomfortable, thought John Boyd Dunlop, and in 1888 promptly invented the pneumatic tire. His son was the first to try out the new, more comfortable feel of motoring. For more clarification, it's off from black and white film into the virtual world. The solid rubber ring gets replaced by a tube. So that it will last a while and not slip down, it gets covered in a cotton material. Already the wheel has a cushioning effect. Then comes a rubber coating with a fabric layer vulcanized onto it. This made the tire less susceptible to damage. Important in an area of poor roads and horseshoe nails left dangerously lying around. To the delight of motoring enthusiasts, it was now also possible to drive faster. Motor racing boomed, but the tube tire was not really suited to high-speed racing. The tire designers needed a rethink. New wheel rims and compounds let them dispense with the tube, the carcass being sealed from within. It was a license to go full throttle. For it was the stability and durability achieved this way that made the legendary endurance races and lap records of the 30s at all possible. Daredevils like Caracciola and Lang were already doing speeds of over 270 kilometers per hour with no helmet or overalls. The people had to live with these tires. They tried to improve them and the drivers and engineers had some influence on this. But the result was always the same. Either they lasted or they didn't. The Second World War meant a break in racing, but not in research. New substances and materials led to new findings. Finally, in the 50s, motor racing was back again, including the start of Formula One. Faster, higher and more extreme. Keep up or give out. Tough times for wheels and tires. It was nothing like these nuances of today. It was not when the tire was wearing down that we needed to know, but when there was no rubber left on it, because you had to change it before then. That was, in fact, the criterion. What is here, still being made by hand, was a veritable revolution. The cross-ply tire was born. A structure of embedded layers made of nylon, rayon and steel fibers enabled maximum performance. However, this design still didn't have enough firmness. Under heavy loading and in corners, the tire still went significantly out of shape. Crossplay tires never gave you much directional stability. I still remember that well. You always had an unsteady feeling. The search for the perfectly robust tire went on. New race series sprang up like mushrooms. Lateral longitudinal and impact forces and non-stop pressure at high temperature. The cars became ever faster and ever tougher on the tires. In the 70s, the counter design, radial tires. Now, alternatively aligned layers in a steel belt round the tire had the forces from every direction under control. This division of labor gave the tire not only stability, but also made it more resistant to extreme temperatures and allowed new styles of tread. I can still remember what the difference was like, the leap from cross-ply to radial, it was huge. The steering stability and the grip, it was different as day and night. Then later when the tires were really wide, you could then brake much, much later, and the tires also lasted longer. They were very interesting times. Tire technology received an extra boost as the era began of racing cars with over 1,000 horsepower. Tires mutated to mighty rollers, with the cars so packed with power they could hardly run anymore. At the end of the 80s came a paradigm change in racing car construction. Lightweight design and safety are thus the key features of modern high-speed tires. Multiple layers of high-strength synthetic fibers, such as Kevlar, make the tire more stable than ever. At the same time, new compounds and designs produce unprecedented handling characteristics. Motor racing means driving at the limit, lap after lap, and development never stands still. Lighter, stronger, safer, and more eco-friendly? Round is the one thing it will always stay.